Um, so I guess I'll start by just introducing the project and introducing what you're about to see. Um, Jung Woo was invited in 2009 to begin photographing inside the DMZ, which has never been documented. Uh, South Korean government invited him to take photographs. And so over a period of, uh, I know, I'm, do, I, do I need a mic? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, I don't like that. Is it on? Here, could you do that? hearing my voice. <laughs> okay. Um, so, as I was saying, he was invited by the South Korean government to photograph inside the DMZ, uh, first civilian being invited to shoot, and so he made about 30 trips over the period of 2009-2010, and would sometimes, they were all organized well in advance, cleared with five different government agencies, and sometimes he would be there for two to three days photographing, um, given all access, and essentially allowed to shoot and photograph anything he liked, which has been collected for the DMZ book that Steidel has published, which is just phenomenal because you really never have seen it. You, we don't, I, don't th I think as Americans, we don't have a sense of what is going on truly inside Korea. Um, and I'm not even sure that anyone else does because until you see what this world looks like, it, it's just, absolutely captivating. So he's put together a slideshow and we'll talk about it as we go through. Thank you very much, Sarah. Well, um, I think American people does not know about very well about Korean war history, so I'll uh, explain a little thing about Korean separation. This is the map of Korea before Korean War. So uh, maybe some of you already knows that Korea uh, was colonized by Japan for 36 years from 1910 until 1945. And in the year of 1945, uh, Korea was separated like this uh, with the 38th parallel. South of 38th parallel is uh, uh, South Korea, and north of it is North Korea. And American army was in South Korea. On the other hand, Russian army is in the North Korea at that time. So 38th parallel is kind of a border between South and North Korea. That is just a, a one line on the map. So if you go to that area, sometimes there is a mountain in between, and sometimes there is a river flowing. So it is just an uh, imaginary line, natural, natural, it's not a, a natural border. And in 1950, North Korean attacked South Korea, and Korean War broke out. So I will show some simple video about that. You mention the Korean War today and most people will look at you with a blank stare. At the time it was fought, just five years after World War II ended, everyone recognized it as a world-shaping conflict, a stark confrontation between the forces of democracy and communism. It began on June 25, 1950, when Soviet-backed communist North Korea crossed the 38th parallel and invaded its U.S.-backed anti-communist South Korean neighbor. Within weeks, the communists had nearly absorbed the entire country. Yet within weeks, President Harry Truman rushed troops to save the shrinking Allied perimeter at Pusan on the southern tip of the Korean Peninsula. By late September 1950, General Douglas MacArthur had successfully completed the Incheon landings and launched counterattacks. He quickly reclaimed the entire South and sent American-led United Nations forces far into North Korea to reunite the entire peninsula only to be surprised when hundreds of thousands of Chinese Red Army troops crossed the Yellow River at the Chinese border and sent the outnumbered Americans reeling back into South Korea. Thanks to the genius of General Matthew Ridgway, who arrived to assume supreme command in South Korea in December 1950, over the next 100 days, U.S.-led UN forces pushed the communists back across the 38th parallel. The fighting was fierce. Seoul, the capital of South Korea, exchanged hands between communists and U.S.-led forces five times before it was finally secured. During the years 1952 and 1953, the war grew static, neither side able to deliver a knockout blow. Eventually, the conflict ended with a tense armistice in July 1953. 
This is the photograph of the signing day of Korean War Armistice. It is signed by uh, American general and North Korean general. South Korean government was not participated here because at that time, South Korean president, he doesn't want to have a uh, truce. So he was not in this uh, signing treaty. This is American newspaper on the day of armistice. This is actual armistice agreement. Now South Korea and North Korea have a DMZ in between. Actually, that is separated by just a few pieces of map. And map is belong to this armistice agreement. It is two volumes of book. Volume one is text of agreement, and volume two is map. So inside of this map, there is a, a line here. It is DMZ. And on that signing treatment, they just draw with a pencil. Because of this, now it is present day DMZ. So when you see this DMZ, you can see these three lines. This central line is, we call it as MDL, military demarcation line. And this is SLL, southern limit line, and this is NLL, northern limit line. Distance between MDL and SLL is just a two kilometer. And from here to NLL is also two kilometers. So from uh, the width of uh, DMZ is uh, four kilometer from west coast of Korean Peninsula all the way to the east coast. This is eastern uh, most map of DMZ. So uh, this was the original uh, border between south and north after the treaty, it goes move upward and it goes downward. So the DMG is starting from here, this point, all the way to the eastern coast. And width is uh, four kilometer. This area uh, was a battleground almost for two years from 1951 to 1953. So many battles are occurring here. And there are so many people died here also. Korean army, American army, Chinese army. Hundred thousands of army personnel died here. So when I uh, go assignment in this inside of DMG, this is Korean uh, special mission uh, personnel, and they are digging the earth to find the war remains of uh, dead soldiers. And on this stage, nobody knows uh, which country this soldier belonged to. After this, they take the uh, DNA sample from this war remain, and then they can find out if he is belonged to American army or Chinese or Korean army. So every year, I think almost 100 war remains discovered like this. This is old uh, American rifle billet. Sometimes they can find the uh, whole human bones, and sometimes they can only find the part of human bones. This area, there are so many uh, bombshells here, and sometimes the dead men, they just uh, separated their body. After they <laughs> discovered the war remains, they moved these bones to the National Cemetery. Or if uh, war remain is belong to American army, uh, they send it to Hawaii. In Hawaii, there is American National Cemetery also. Uh, in uh, 19, uh, no, 2010, it was the uh, 60th anniversary of uh, uh, break of Korean War, and Korean uh, Ministry of National Defense asked me to document inside of DMG officially 
Uh, and I was the first civilian photographer to go inside of the DMZ after the truce in 1953. So more than 60 years, nobody was inside of the DMZ. I was just the first civilian. So in first stage, I used this helicopter and flew over DMZ to take a photo. But this helicopter is uh, Black Hawk, American made, and it's a huge one. And along the DMZ, there is no flight zone. So we uh, flew uh, over a little bit south of no flight zone, all the way from west coast to the east coast, like this. Uh, this is the eastern part of DMZ, and the faraway mountain is North Korea. The name of the mountain is Mount Diamond. In, in, in Korean language, it's Mount Kumgang. It is one of the most beautiful mountains in Korea, all over Korea, and it is national park. And every Korean people want to visit this mountain, but uh, present this mountain is belong to North Korea, so not everybody can go to this place. Uh, this is the landscape. Uh, Sarah told me it is a surreal landscape. Uh, actually, it is. It's a surreal landscape because South Korean army and North Korean army, uh, they set fire from time to time because they want to have an open landscape. Otherwise, if there is a thick forest, they cannot see the enemy infiltration. So they regularly set fire. So as you can see, not many trees here. And this is uh, uh, SLL, Southern Limit Line. SLL is a uh, uh, three-layer fence, barbed wire fence. And this is the road to South Korean guard post. The guard post is like a, a European castle on the top of the mountain. This is all South Korean guard post. And here, the MDL, demarcation line, is going. But MDL is just an imaginary line, so you cannot see. And the, the north part of it, there is NLL. You cannot s Oh, I think this is NLL. This is SLL, uh, barbed wire fence of the southern limit of DMZ. So I was uh, on board a Black Hawk helicopter, but Black Hawk helicopter is quite big. So if sometimes Black Hawk can over into no flying zone, so it is very dangerous. Once the helicopter is flying over no flying zone, they're going to shoot down. So small helicopter was guide us to uh, this way and that way. This, uh, after flying over DMZ, we approach into DMZ on the land side. And when you go there, you have to cross the CC jet. It is a civilian control zone. This is the gate into CC jet. So this is the northernmost point that Korean citizen can go freely. And from this point, Normal citizen cannot go. Uh, if they want to go, they have to ask a special permission from Korean Ministry of National Defense. Yeah, this is the CCZ gate. Uh, after passing CCZ gate, you can see this kind of uh, construction. This we call it as a uh, dragon's teeth. This is anti-tank barricade or uh, obstacles. And we have almost every uh, road connecting to North Korea, we have this kind of tank obstacle. The reason is that it, when Korean War broke out, North Korea has a more than 200 Russian-made tanks. And at that time, South Korean army has no tanks. So when the war broke out, they cannot fight each other. They have a tank. We don't have a tank. We didn't have a tank. So 
South Korean army just uh, defeated because of the North Korean tank. So South Korean government has a trauma about Russian-made tank. So after war ended, South Korean government make this kind of tank obstacle on all the roads to connecting to North Korea, like this. So this obstacle have a small hole here. This is a small hole. When they have a news about war uh, broke, uh, they open this hole and they put dynamite here and they explode it. And when they explode, this heavy uh, concrete uh, barrier is just uh, falling down and just lock the roads so North Korean tank cannot go southwards. Is it? How do you know Paju? Continue. Okay. <laughs> uh, Paju is the name of uh, one city uh, so, uh, northwest of Seoul. Well, uh, that one is near Paju, and not even Paju, all over uh, Seoul city, we can find this kind of obstacles. There are so many uh, numerous styles and types of anti-tank barricade here. Uh, so from 2010, I started my uh, uh, shooting inside of DMG, and we prepared uh, one special uh, vehicle like this to go inside of DMZ. Uh, the road condition inside of DMG is so harsh, so there are not many paved roads. The road is really dirty, and pebbles, and muddy, and a lot of times we have puncture, tired, and all. So the road con condition is not very good here. Yeah, like this, we have a punctured tire inside, and we have to change. I talked to you about the uh, uh, MDL, Military Demarcation Line. I uh, said it is just an imaginary line. So this is Military Demarcation Line, and there is a, a small thing here. This is a, just a stack of pole, concrete pole, like this much big, about 1.5 meters big. Uh, the pole is made with concrete and there is a metal signboard. On the cover of metal signboard, there is a sign that this is MDL, like this one. This is 60 years old and it is all rotten, like this. Uh, the condition of this signboard is quite nice because this signboard is well preserved in one area. Uh, there is one special area named the JSA, Joint Security Area, and on that place, North and South Korean soldiers can meet uh, face to face. So on that specific point, the condition is very good like this. So you can see military demarcation line. This is actual border between South and North. And on the top, there is a, a Korean language military demarcation line this. Back side of this, there is a Korean language and Chinese language here. So, uh, my book, can I have my book? The designer of, uh, of my book in the Steidl Publishing Company, they have a, uh, they see entire of this design. So this is a ten for three part of DMZ. This is MDL. This is southern part and northern part. So in the southern part, it is written in English and Korean like this. Northern part it is written in uh, Chinese and Korean language. So this is the graphic of 
DMG, this is the MDL, this is southern limit line and northern limit line. It's 224 to 25 to 424 kilometers. I already told you that there is no line here. This is just an imaginary line, this is just a pole. The total number of pole is 1292 from west coast to east coast. But 99% of the poles are just disappeared. Because the 60 years is a very long and crazy system, gone by fire, gone by earthquake or something. So almost uh, nothing is remaining now. So this is just imaginary. That means once you go inside here, you should meet with the North Korean army in any place, any time. So inside, it is really, really dangerous. Uh, this is the sign board of, uh, board of SLL, uh, in English, South Boundary of DMZ. Unauthorized person, do not enter. Authorized person must show pass identification. This is according to the uh, armistice agreement, but actually there is no authorized person to go into DMZ. This is just uh, the sentence. This is the 60 years old sign board. I found it in, in one place. So this is the typical uh, landscape of SLL. Usually, a uh, southern limit line has a three-layer fence. A uh, long time ago, in the 1960s, 1970s, it is just a one-layer fence. But sometimes, uh, North Korean soldiers just uh, infiltrate into the fence with the uh, cutting tools. So after then, South Korean government make a double fence, and then they um, they made a three-layer fence these days. And from uh, 2015, South Korean government put electronic uh, censoring system here. So South Korean government having idea to get rid of all the soldiers along SLL and they just monitoring uh, inside of the army barrack to see electronically they uh, monitoring the all the condition of the fences uh, this area because not many uh, nobody living in this area this is the heaven for migratory birds now it is, uh, these days it's end of November. End of November, there are so many uh, cranes like this uh, flying from Siberia to Korea. And this area is a very nice place to rest because there is nobody. So they uh, sleep inside of DMZ. Inside of DMZ there is nobody, only it's a minefield. and but. That area, they have no food to eat. So when the sun uh, coming up in the morning, they fly down to South Korean uh, cultivating area to find some seed or some food like this. So every early in the morning, we can see this beautiful flying of migratory bird. This is a three-layer fence of uh, SLL in the winter time like this. And also we have uh, not many, but uh, some endangered species in and out of DMZ. Actually, the four kilometer wide area is not a big place for wild animal. But anyhow, sometimes we can see this kind of mountain goat, or, or not tiger here, but uh, uh, small mammals we can find. Yeah, this is also a three-layer fence of SLL. As you see like this, uh, during the daytime, uh, you cannot see any activity inside of DMG. Most of army personnel, they just sleep during daytime. But after sunset, they are moving here and there 
to check out the, the, the condition of the fences. And after sunset, South, South Korean part of DMZ, the Korean government put a very bright uh, lamp, illumination, all along from West Coast to East Coast. It is 248 kilometer. There is uh, thousands of lamps uh, illuminating like this to prevent infiltration from North Korea, like this. So it is natrium lamp, so when I take photograph, the color is like, uh, looks like red, but actually it is a uh, yellow color. So it is beautiful when I see from the top of the mountain, all the way from west coast to the east coast, uh, this kind of, this lamp is just uh, continuously limiting. It's like a Christmas tree sometimes. And on the other hand, the North Korean side, when I uh, see inside of the DMZ, it is totally black. Not any single lamp I could see. Uh, this is the gate to go inside of DMZ. So along the SLL, we have a two kinds of gate. This kind of tunnel type of gate this is tunnel type of gate, and this is just a metal gate. We have these two kind of gate. And all along DMG, we have the, uh, the number of around 100 gate. Usually it is uh, uh, locked during the day times. And when I have a mission to go inside, this kind of uh, reconnaissance squad is helping me uh, to go together with me to go inside of DMZ and they guided me. Uh, I have no censorship to do this assignment, but I could not move free inside of DMZ because everywhere is minefield. So when we go in, these uh, soldiers, armored soldiers guided me Uh, they open the tunnel type gate and we go inside. Uh, when I go in, uh, usually there are four or five army jeeps moving together. No, this is not JSA. This is ju just normal entrance to DMG. So when they open this gate, once they open, it is totally open all the way to North Korean fences. So. If some North Korean soldiers ambush there, they can just uh, run across. So they are very cautious when they open the door. In Korean language, it is uh, this uh, gate is the gate to go to the battlefield. And South Korean army like that kind of uh, skeleton. So you, you can see this kind of design all around the DMZ. And according to Korean war armistice agreement, all the, the vehicles go inside of the DMZ, they have to put blue color flag in front. Otherwise, North Korean uh, army shoot with machine gun, like this blue color. So this is inside of DMG. We move slowly together. And when I found the exact location to take the photo, then I asked the captain to stop, and then I can uh, go down to the land, and when I take the photo, the soldiers moving around, and they are just uh, looking in this position, like this. According to the armistice agreement, it is not allowed to use 
heavy machine gun in DMZ. So only uh, personal, personal uh, pistol or this kind of rifle they can carry. This building we call it as a GP, a guard post. Guard post is located inside of DMZ. It's like an island in the land. And the total numbers of this kind of guard post is around 120 all through the DMZ. Actual, actual number of the, it is a military secret. And uh, Korean Ministry of National Defense is, will not be happy if I tell like this. Anyway, the number is more uh, just uh, over 100. So when I approached the uh, guard post, they opened the gate. And when they opened, the soldiers coming out, and they just uh, put their position to look around. And the, when the vehicle is go inside, they just close again. Yeah, this is typical uh, guard post in plain area. And this is GP in mountainous area. Usually, uh, this photo was taken from SLL. Distance between SLL to GP is around one kilometer. And distance between GP and GP is, uh, uh, in mountain area, it is one kilometer, and in plain area, it is about two kilometers. Yeah, this is a uh, guard post in summer season. So as you see, uh, South Korean guard post looks like a European castle on the top of the mountain. But North Korean part, we cannot see any building. Uh, this is NLL, Northern Limit Line. North Korean army also have GP, but we cannot see very well. This is North Korean GP. It is a very small house liking small uh, construction and most of their facility is inside of uh, beneath the ground so north korea and chinese soldier they always dig the ground and they put everything in beneath the ground they don't they don't like american satellite and american uh, airplane to catch them. Yeah, this is South Korean GP. During daytime, like this, only one or two soldiers just uh, looking around, and most of soldiers uh, get sleep. And in the nighttime, they coming out and they go to reconnaissance mission. So once soldiers go into this GP, they have to stay there for about three months, and then they change again to go outside and another uh, team is coming here. This is rooftop of uh, uh, guard post. And this is the gate of the guard post. This is, uh, the guard post is uh, uh, protected with this kind of two layer barbed wire fence. And in every guard post, uh, there is a Korean flag and United Nations flag. This is the uh, last guard post in uh, near the eastern uh, coast. And behind, you can see the mountain, that Diamond Mountain in North Korea. And you can see this army jeep is moving here. So this is uh, uh, the connecting road between guard post and uh, SLL. Usually this is one kilometer. And uh, army vehicle is taking food and uh, soldiers, and they are commuting. And in some mountainous area, this road condition is not very good. And during the winter time, there is a one meter of two meter of snow, deep snow here. So in the case, army vehicle cannot go in. So they usually use uh, a metal rope, like a cable car, and they uh, supply food with this rope, moving rope. So during winter time, this kind of guard post is uh, separate more than one month. 
this is typical uh, landscape of North Korean side. Uh, there is a, a northern limit line. It is just a one layer, simple barbed wire fence. And you can see the simple building. Uh, that is kind of a bunker. Only three or four North Korean soldiers are stationed there. And all other facilities beneath the ground. So compare with this South Korean GP, and this, this is North Korean GP, and this is South Korean GP. Uh, this is a, a rather big size North Korean GP. When I take this photo, I was surprised, surprised that they are playing volleyball, uh, not volleyball, basketball here. So there is a basketball playground, and this, I didn't see they playing, but anyhow, th there is uh, the kind of thing. Uh, this is South Korean uh, soldiers inside of GP. They are preparing their uh, personnel gun for mich uh, reconnaissance mission. Sometimes during daytime, the reconnaissance squad open the GP gate and go out like this. When they go out, they always move together. One squad is moving together. I mean, 12 numbers of soldiers. So as I told you before, this is a reconnaissance trail. It is very narrow, just a one meter wide trail. Out of this trail is unidentified minefield. So once you go out of the trail, you can put mine in any time, anywhere. So it is really, really dangerous, and I was not allowed to go out of this trail. So in many places in DMG, you can see this uh, mine uh, warning sign like this. So one time uh, I found this mine. This is land mine, almost uh, six, 60 years old. But according to army officer, this 60-year-old mine can explode anytime. So when we find it, we was ordered to stand still there. And they made a radio call to special mission forces, and they come to remove this. So this is EOD, the special uh, task forces, and they come to this place and they try to get rid of it. This is typical landmine, and there is a, a three needle here. Once you put the needle, mine doesn't explode. But when you take your foot out, then it explodes. So once you put it on, then you don't need to move. You just have to wait. But if there is a slight movement, then boom. So he, uh, this special task force used this needle. If we put this needle, once you put it, it, it's not moving, so it's not exploding, so it's a safe. So this is a very important mission. So this was the slideshow I prepared today. So what is your impression to see this? <laughs> My impression. Um, well, I think it's what I, I thought would be very interesting because here in America, um, we don't really understand what it's like. Um, we have ideas about what North Korea is based on the way the president acts. Um, and we have ideas about South Korea based on our relationship with South Korea, but we don't really have a sense of what it's like to be inside 
for South Korea to be dealing with still this tension that exists. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit, like now you've taken us inside the DMZ, but I'm wondering if you could talk about, give us a little context because we only know our separate relationships with Koreas, mm -hmm. but not necessarily what it's like for the Korean people themselves. Mm -hmm. Since Korean independence in 1945, uh, before it was, uh, we were colonized by Japan, and we get independence because of America. Because uh, on, in the year of 1945, America uh, put atomic bomb on Japan. Because of that, we got independence. So most of majority of South Korean people is thankful to America. And in North Korea, they were ruled by Russian army after independence. So from that point, our, our country is a separate, totally separate to to communism and uh, uh, free economical uh, situation. So these days, as you know, there is one uh, young mad leader in North Korea, and nobody knows what is his idea. Did you get the news that early today morning, he already fired one missile? Really? To, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. To this morning. Mm -hmm. So that happened from time to time. Right. So most of uh, South Korean people is very worried about that. And nobody knows the future of Korean Peninsula now. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think, the thing we see what he does. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like, you know, obviously we have our own madman. Um, and <laughs> they're, as I was saying before, they're very well matched for each other. Mm -hmm. um, but separately from that, I think, you know, we as Americans tend to make everything about ourselves. And we don't necessarily understand the situation within Korea mm -hmm. that South Koreans have to live with every day. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, is this something that's part of the national consciousness, or do you sort of just block it out? You know, how do you live with knowing North Korea is right there? Actually, as a Korean citizen, we uh, we are not sensitive with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Many news is coming from North Korea about their missile bombing and their nuclear test and so and so. But when you go to my uh, city, uh, the capital city of Korea, Seoul, nobody worry about that. It is really, really uh, similar with uh, uh, central Manhattan. So many people is on in the street and they st they enjoy their life and everything. <laughs> And in the middle of uh, my town, there is a big American army camp. And uh, many uh, Korean people believe that American soldiers, they can protect us when something happens. I don't know. We, we, you have a strange leader here also. So if something happened, nobody knows. But anyway, we Korean people, we are not very sensitive about the political situations. I understand that. I think that's how you have to be to live. Um, and that reminds me of the fact that while you were working on the project, North Korea found out and they got kind of, could you talk about what that was? How, when you found out that North Korea was reacting and how you yeah. responded to that? Yeah. Uh, from 2010 to 2011, almost two years, I uh, have an assignment inside the DMZ. And when I go inside, uh, the army asked me to change my clothing into army uniform because they don't want to be noticed by North Korean <laughs> side. So I changed my clothing to full army uniform without any rank. And I have to use a helmet and a bulletproof vest. But uh, instead of gun, I have to carry my big camera, <laughs> two camera with a uh, quite big size telephoto lens, the, the size is like this. And always North Korean soldiers, they are using binocular uh, to what's going on in the southern part. And they, obviously they noticed me. 
And in uh, JSA, there is a, a, a conference room, and they have a uh, telephone connection line between North and South Korean uh, liaison officer. And through this line, they protested that one uh, Korean journalist is coming to DMG frequently, and he's use, using special equipment, and he's focusing to uh, that equipment to northern direction. So if this thing happen again and again, they're gonna shoot me. Uh, they're gonna shoot the journalist. They protest like this. Mm -hmm. And I, I heard the news from army officer. Mm -hmm. and so what did you think? Well, I have nothing to do. <laughs> I, j I just uh, cautious when I go inside. Uh, when you go inside uh, the, the landscape, some place you can see North Korean GP directly. It is open space without any obstacle. And in some area, there is a uh, mound, hills, and small mountain, uh, so it is not open. So that protected area, it is quite OK. I'm, uh, uh, I am moving rather freely. I took free, freely photographing. But in open area, I have to be always cautious. And the army soldiers surrounding me, and they protecting, and they using binocular to see the activity of North Korean soldiers like that. And there is one sign in uh, uh, inside of Korean DMG. Southern part, South Korean army, they don't use machine gun in DMG because it is, it is uh, uh, not allowed, uh, not allowed uh, uh, weapon according to the agreement. But in North side, they are using heavy machine gun. And their, their heavy machine gun is inside of the bunker, and usually it is closed, it is shut with the door. And when they open the door, then means they can shoot anytime. So army officer is using his binocular to see the North Korean bunker, if it is open or not. If it is open, they are in high alert. They are very, very cautious, and they ask me to go some protected place. But when it is close, it is rather safe. So to open, it takes time. So that means North Korean soldiers have no intention to shoot us. So it is quite safe. And you were also describing that um, the North Korean army just didn't look um, perhaps as threatening as the displays that they show the world. That, um, you just didn't really feel that they were ready to go to war, per se? Uh, they threatened sometimes. And in the DMG, a uh, long time ago, South Korean government used uh, a loudspeaker, very big loudspeaker. It is combination of uh, uh, the stack of loudspeaker. The so total number is about 40. 60 like that, it makes huge sound. And they just uh, put the speaker to the northern side and broadcasting K-pop and really funny songs, something like that. And every time North Korean, uh, they threaten us to shoot or fire some uh, weapons. But that happened very scarcely sometimes they put fire towards. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, moving forward, I think, you know, the book is really interesting that the government wanted it done, mm -hmm. um, wanted to show the world what was really happening inside the DMC. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could talk about what kind of message you want to share with people, because you saw something none of us could ever see. The message is just simple. Uh, in 1953, we have a uh, armistice agreement. The armistice is not a, a peace treaty. So in my country, war is still going on. Uh, technically, we are at war. So my message is that I want to show the condition of my uh, home country that is still at war. It is not in the peaceful condition. 
and that wall can broke again in any time. So that is my message to outer world that we have this kind of dangerous area and war can broke out in any time. I want to I want to show this kind of condition of my home country to other people. So while it's possible, are you optimistic or is this just not really something you could be optimistic that about? That is a really difficult question because of that mad leader. Uh, originally, I was very optimistic about the future of my country because uh, Korea is such a small country and something has happened. Every, everything is collapsed with this sophisticated modern weapon. It is totally collapsible. So I was optimistic that northern side and southern side, they have their own position and they stayed calm. But because of this mad leader, something can be happened. So now, these days, my mind is changing here and there. Yeah, sometimes when I have a news that he's put a missile on the East Sea, it is really, uh, really, uh, I really worried about that. And after a few days, it's going again back and it is, I'm optimistic again, and so it is changing now. So, uh, you know, because this, my feeling is that it's really a psychological game mm -hmm. that he's playing, mm -hmm. um, that he's firing missiles, but he's not firing at people. He's yes. not actually trying to start anything, he's trying to, he's kind of a loud barker. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree that it is a psychological thing, but you have a strong man in America now. So that strong man makes some kind of wrong decision, and then something can be happen. Nobody knows. Yeah, no, I see that now. <laughs> 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 Excellent.